the yeah. one armed bandit <laughs> is a device which looks sort of like a, a small assembly motor with a uh, shaft sticking out with a rotating element, okay? It's like a wheel rotating right here, okay? Now, under that wheel that rotates, there's a little cup that you can fill with oil. So that as this round metallic wheel circulates, it would pull oil up and roll it over the top of it, right? Everybody got that? Motor, shaft, rotating element, cup with oil in it, it rotates, it'll pull that oil up and it bathes itself in oil, right? Okay, now I got a handle. Now a handle is hooked up to a hinge over here so that I can pull it down like this. And I take a test element, a piece of metal, that I put in this thing, and on the rotating wheel that's rotating like this, this piece of metal is going to come down and hit that surface, right? And if I come over here on the handle and push down, I'm going to push my test piece against the rotating element, and the only thing separating the test piece from the rotating element is the oil film. So, sounds pretty good so far, right? I'm testing oil, man. And the thing is, I just got to be careful of how calibrated I am on how I push down on the handle, right? Because I don't know how calibrated my arm is, whether I'm putting 50 pounds, 75, 150, maybe I'm hanging my whole weight on it, who knows? But I have no real control over that. So, the one arm bandit from a lot of places, they said, okay, you can't control that, that's malarkey, you can't use that thing, right? So somebody came along and said, I have a plan. And they took the end of the handle, made a nice round piece of it, and they took these weights that might weigh, I don't know, five pounds a piece. Is that, is that you got it? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Except you got up the uh, you got oh, up wait, the, the wait, slot wait. machine there. Uh, yeah. That's it. That's it. See if you can okay. see if you can project that up on the screen. Well, no, I'll just pass it around. Okay. Okay. So now here's the thing. The one arm bandit. A guy decided he'd fix this so it could really be calibrated by sliding these weights on the end. So what you do is you get it going. It's running. It's rubbing there, and then you put a weight on. You put another weight on. And you see how many weights you can get on until the oil film breaks down and it goes metal to metal. Okay? So if one oil can handle only one donut, but another oil can handle two or three donuts, why the oil that handles three donuts has got to be three times as good as the one that handles one donut before it goes and goes metal to metal. Now, right? See where the man is pushing down on this lever and it, it's hands on this side, it's showing the kind of awkward way that I show. This is a rotating element, and he's pushing down on that, and there's a piece in there that as this thing rotates, it's going to test, okay? Now, everybody condemned this machine in the old days because the person pushing down it. How in the world could he know how much pressure he was putting in there? Well, some people said, I'll take a torque wrench and put on there and see when I've got, you know, 40 pounds of torque, right? So they came to that. And they said, no, that's not good enough. So a guy came along change this handle, right, made it round, where you can slide weighted donuts on there, weight that would pull down on it, right? So we're all working on this machine. All the geniuses of the world are working on this machine to make it certifiable, right? The only problem is, this machine is designed to test gear lube, not motor oil. Mm -hmm. And you might say, well, they're still both lubricants, how can it make that much difference? Because Gear lubes have extreme pressure additives in the gear lube. Those are sulfur-based chemical reactive uh, molecules that under pressure and temperature chemically bond to the surface of the metal, providing a lubricating, if you will, anti-wear, extreme pressure, molybdenum surface on the metal. So that when it does go metal to metal, it really goes molybdenum to molybdenum. And it slides and goes right past it. There are no extreme pressure additives in motor oil. Let me say that again. There are no extreme pressure additives in motor oil. There are no chemically reactive molybdenum molecules to plate on the surface. So when you test this, the way they test it, 
It's only a matter of exactly how the orientation is and how many seconds it takes for the normal anti-wear additives in the oil to be stripped from the surface and go metal to metal because they will not chemically attach. So you can't use a gear lube tester to test motor oil and get any kind of reliable testing results that mean anything. So I don't care how many donuts you put on the handle, whether you get uh, Peter Pan to operate the torque wrench or what other type of carnival activity that you provide on this thing, it is not designed to test motor oil. Now, when I went to the Felix testing site, who this thing is giving credit for being one of their machines, you can't find it because they don't sell it anymore because it's not a reliable test instrument. To be reliable, it has to have an ASTM procedure to operate it. Sure. There isn't an ASTM procedure for this thing, other than something for the carnival, you know, run down to the carnival and have people guess on which thing will happen, because the ASTM says that the test must be repeatable without a human element. A wow. human cannot make a mistake and change the test. The test has to be set up in a way that if it goes down by the testing procedure, it's repeatable over and over, and it doesn't matter whether Tom, Dick, or Harry, or Jane set up the test, it will be the same every time. That's the ASTM. ASTM is the American Society for Testing Materials. This gets not even in the same parking lot with and ASTM. And they've changed their name now to ASTM International. Is it? Um, yeah. And then, and also, now how does, um, how does um, Royal Purple, or I, if you don't want to say Royal Purple, how do um, oil, how do they use this to, how do they manipulate it to look, to make it be in there? They face? take guys uh, motor oil, and they stick it in there, and they show that one motor oil outlasts the other before you go metal to metal. But it's irrelevant, because even if you said that's an indication of the anti-wear additives in there, you've got a lot of poked in there, obviously the one with a lot of zinc and phosphorus might last longer than the one that's short of zinc and phosphorus. But the, the situation is it really doesn't matter because the lubricating regime for anti-wear additives in the engine is what they call boundary lubrication. Boundary lubrication is handled by anti-wear additives, zinc and phosphorus. In a gear set, we're not talking about boundary lubrication, we're talking about actually when you get down to it, uh, when those gears mesh, depending upon how they mesh, you may actually have what they call elastohydrodynamic lubrication, which is a much more severe on the surfaces of the metal. And without having that uh, hardened chemical attached plate on the surface, you could not have those gears mesh. They would literally tear metal apart on each other every time they came together under extreme pressure. They would rip that anti-wear additive would be gone. There's anti-wear additive, by the way, in gear loop. Because guess what it's lubricating? Gears. The bearings that's holding the shafts that the gears are on. That's where the anti-wear additive is working. But the EP is being plated on the surface of the gears. And in a, a rear end of a car that has what they call a um, Oh, what is it, a high point gear. High point gear means that you've increased the size of the surface area of the gear by making the surface curve and having the one gear hit and slide down the surface. Anytime you have a contact and slide, you got to have what they call GL5 level of the extreme pressure additives. Okay, so what I'm saying about this test is that there was a guy one time, this is not my statement, there was a guy one time that made the statement that knowledge should not be confused with wisdom. Okay, now knowledge is saying that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is saying that you don't put a tomato in a fruit salad. Okay, so this is mixing the purpose of testing where I'm trying to put a tomato in a fruit salad. It's a misapplication of the design of the test. And no matter how you rig it, how many weights you put on it, how many you run it up and down, it doesn't represent a true test of motor oil. Now, you can get a relative but not repeatable test of gear lube using this, but when you use it, the problem is nobody's going to buy it because the reason that the Felix doesn't sell this machine anymore is because it's not repeatable with consistency without human effect, if everybody understands what I mean. 
You can't repeat that test without there being some variation by you the person. Force, you can force it to fail. Oh yeah, the speed at which you put it on overheats the oil just yeah. like that. I mean, in fact, you watch a guy that used to do this before the donuts they slide on, and they have you going, ah, oh, we're working on it. It's taking some time. And it just, such, you know, just wait for the guy to be hawking out. And like, hey, hey, you know, calling into the carnival. We're working on it. Well, the reason he's taking so much time on it is because the slower he goes, the longer it takes for it to blow the oil film out. Then he gets another one and says, oh, this is going to be a big test on this one. Let's get right to it. You see, that oil was no good at all, right? Well, you can put molasses in there. Well, the thing that will run in that thing and surprise everybody, you can put classic Coke in that and it'll almost out test the motor oil. It's so full of sulfur, it'll almost just about out test the motor oil, just classic Coke. So by that test, that means you should put classic Coke in your car. Just pull into the 7-Eleven, buy a case of Coca-Cola and pour it in the thing and drive down so the road. So you clean your battery ends anyway. So anyway, I wanted to address this because I've got a couple guys, i got a lot of people going to my YouTube videos and one of the guys came there and said, what about this? I mean, I've seen this oil tested and I've not seen Amsoil tested on this. I've seen the things back and said, and you're not going to see Amsoil tested on this. If that's what you're waiting on, just go buy whatever it is that you want because we're not going to take time with a non-applicable test that has nothing to do with motor oil and get involved in some carnival game of chicanery. So.